They don't want you to talk about yourself. They want you to believe that you're a dumb nigga from Africa and you're a monkey. They want you to believe that. They don't want you to believe that you, hey, they don't want you to believe that you're divinely guided. But Francis Ngannou, right? There's a guy 10 years ago was working in the sand mines in Cameroon. 10 years ago, he was working in the sand mines of Cameroon. Then he moves to, he escapes there, he gets to uh, France, he's sleeping in his car, in a car park, you know. And now he's the champion of the world. I mean, talk about that for inspiration. And th let, let's just talk about the potential that Francis Ngannou has, right? Because we haven't seen a guy like this since Mike Tyson, starching people with one fucking shot. Mm. And when you do that, the world watches. Look at Mike Tyson, look at the money he earned. And that's what the UFC has now on their hands. They're ceiling successful. Huh. You know what I mean? They're successful at the ceiling. You want to break through the ceiling and go to the stars, the universe, the galaxies. Could you believe, could you imagine if he had beaten Kane, JDS, Curtis Blades, and freaking uh, Darzino as champion? That's the potential. That's what's potentially on the table right now because he's only 34. You cannot create a fight nor a flurry with Francis Ngannou because if you do, he will put you to sleep, man. There's probably never, nobody ever in the, on planet Earth that has power like Francis Ngannou. I mean, we're looking at probably one of the scariest men on the planet, you know, to date. Oh, big, strong guy, hits hard, you know, just, uh, definitely, definitely a tough guy. You have to let the people know that this is what I'm aware of. Make them aware of what's going on, since these guys don't want to fight them. And then people, make the crowd, make the people aware that the people are afraid to fight. Yeah, it's because you would be afraid to fight Francis. Doesn't mean I would be afraid to fight Francis. You're probably not like me, remember that. But guys, make no mistake about it. Jones believes that he will beat Francis in Ghana, as any great champion would believe that they would beat him. John Jones, for everything that's between us, is not afraid of Francis Ngannou. I mean, this is absurd that people think that he's not afraid, bro. John Jones tweeted out, show me the money, first of all. And then Dana said, well, you know, anytime someone says show me, show me the money, it means he doesn't want to fight. And he's made it very clear he does not want this fight. He's also made it very clear that he will do the fight. Not wanting to fight and not willing to do it are two separate things. This is problematic and this shouldn't come down to money. Shame on you for talking about the money. I don't agree with Chael. Uh, and we're in this weird sticking point because even though Jones was guaranteed the heavyweight shot, I think I'm not saying he's pricing himself out of the market, but he wants fucking mega bucks for this fight. John Jones versus Francis Ngannou, that's going to be a big fight, right? And he wants what he feels he's worth. He wants his worth. I say, listen, I give you the, the lion's share of the purse. Please fight me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would do. I'd do that. I say, listen, listen, you take my purse. Please fight me. Come fight me. You're going you're gonna to have to use it for a hospital bill anyway, but please fight. Come on, that. please. I used to always say, you, I give you my chance. You're going to use it to buy a fly wheelchair. That's all. <laughs> All that there's left now for Jones is financial reward. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, you go out there as a fighter, you want to prove yourself, you want to show I'm the bad man, I want to win the championship, I want to defend the belt. He's done that. He's done it and again and again and again. He's taken out generations of fighters. Jones versus Francis, it's the fight to make, man. It's one of those big fights that don't come around often. They probably will meet somewhere in the middle. I certainly hope so. Right, I'm really excited to see John Jones in there at heavyweight. I want to see him fight Francis Ngannou. I don't think it'd be a good night at the office for him. I honestly don't see a way. Most of the physical attributes, other than probably conditioning, he can't compete with Francis. But he does have experience and he, he is a master of strategy and game plans. He always has been. John Jones has always came with fantastic game plans. And to beat somebody like Francis, you fucking need a good game plan. I don't know if Jones ever has been an underdog as he is today against Ngannou. People want to see John lose and they're trying to goad him into this. I think it's very mature and responsible for Dana to simply say, he says he wants to do it, but he doesn't. He's going to price himself out and we're going to look somewhere else. For me, that's above board and they should be looking somewhere else. They should be looking at Derek Lewis, the last man to beat Francis Ngannou. I don't even count that as a beat in France. You know, that fight right there. That was I a worst fight. People don't even talk, bring that up. I for sure would love to run it back though. Derrick Lewis would be an interesting fight, obviously, because they had that first fight, and Derrick Lewis beat him, right? But I, I, I'd favor, I'd favor Ngannou in, in, in the rematch. No disrespect oh, yeah. to Derrick Lewis, but he's one man that could match him for power, for sure. We gotta do, we gotta do a rematch, you know. Me and Francis gotta do a rematch. I guarantee it will be more entertaining than what it was. It'll be okay. at least one punch more.
than they did last fight. Yeah. Looking back, and I said it on ESPN, it's so foolish to pick against him. <laughs> Why on earth would I expect Stipe Miocic to beat him? Just did not look like Stipe really understood what was in front of him. It was a different, it was like, like Rogan said the other day, the first puzzle was a hundred word piece puzzle. Now he's got Rubik's cubes that he's trying to figure out because it was a completely different animal standing in front of him. Francis did not resemble himself at all. Francis didn't even look like the same guy that fought Jarzinho Rosenstrike, mm. right? Because even with Rosenstrike, he tried to do what he did in round one versus Miocic. But ultimately he goes, you know what? Enough of this. I'm just going to blitz this dude, right? He blitzed him, chin hanging up in the air, just throwing punches until he landed one. Saturday, he never did that. Mm. Even when he hurt Stipe, he never went crazy. He took his time and just found the right shots to help him win the fight. I, what I liked about Nganu, of course, the explosives, the power, that's always been there. But what we saw, which we hadn't seen before, let's remember his last fight against Rosenstruck, 20 seconds. Uh, uh, Junior Dos Santos, about a minute. You know, all these guys, he just plows through them. As soon as the referee says fight, he goes like a psycho. On this occasion, he took his time. He was very mature. He stalked his prey. He cut off the octagon perfectly, and he was taking his time. He learned how to wrestle. Like he, he learned how to sprawl. And you want to talk about the punching power uh, of a Ford Escort hitting his face? I times that by five. The sprawling power. He knows how to sprawl. He knows how to defend. A lot of people are trying to help him with the wrestling. Outside of just all of his teammates, Randy Couture has been helping him with his wrestling tomorrow. Usman's been working with him on that. So you can see why he's improving. Can you imagine as the champion, he's going out there and he's just destroying everybody? That guy is must see TV and anyone who's even half a combat sports fan, but he's gonna cross over. The heavyweight champion, especially the general public, right? They wanna see a guy that does not resemble them in any shape, way, shape or form, right? They want to see a guy that almost looks outer-worldly. A guy that you don't see just walking up the street. When I was the heavyweight champ, there's millions of me just walking around the street. When Stipe was the champ, there's a lot of guys that are 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 225, 230 pounds. Even though we're scary, we don't look as though we don't exist in this world. Francis does. You don't see many 6'4", 280-pound men that look physically like Francis Ngannou. That is what people want to see when they think of the baddest man on the planet. But he is going to be known as truly the baddest man on the planet. Because there aren't many of them. And I think this is the first time the UFC has had a guy that strikes that type of intrigue 